Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the so-called Fermi bubbles. There's a new paper that came out very recently that sort of explains once and for all how these bubbles came to be and what it may mean for the future of our galaxy. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So if you were to kind of sort of look into the middle of our galaxy, which is somewhere right there, and especially if you were to do so using a very powerful gamma ray telescope and x-ray telescope, you would start seeing some unusual features. Specifically what you would actually start seeing, and here we actually have to really kind of leave the galaxy for this to make more sense, you would start seeing these unusual features from the top and the bottom of our own galaxy. Basically these unusual formations that sort of look like this. And each of them is pretty long, it's about 25,000 light years from the center of the galaxy up to the peak of the actual bubble. But since their original discovery, we still kind of couldn't really explain how they came to be and what all of this means. And in case you were wondering how we discovered them and why we were able to find them so suddenly, they were discovered by this. This is known as Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope, which is actually why they're called Fermi Bubbles. Nothing to do with the Fermi Paradox or the Enrico Fermi, it's basically just named after the telescope that is named after Enrico Fermi. But in the middle of the galaxy there are also these unusual X-ray formations that we discovered back in 2003 that also seem to emanate from the center of the galaxy and for the most part they seem to have been separate from the Fermi bubbles. But some of the recent studies started to discover something different. And more specifically this study right here investigated these X-ray formations and tried to see if they were related to the formation of the Fermi bubbles. And by essentially using several computer simulations and by doing a really thorough analysis in regards to the both gamma ray observations and x-ray observations, the scientists behind this paper discovered that there is a huge correlation between the galactic center by conical x-ray structure, as it's known, and the Fermi bubbles. More specifically, they seem to completely align with one another, suggesting of course that both of them did originate from the same event. And more specifically, the study investigated these different edges of the X-ray emissions and compared them to the Fermi bubble emissions, discovering that both were completely aligned with one another. Which is not really a surprising discovery, but it's a very important confirmation that whatever happened in our galaxy approximately 5 million years ago was indeed responsible for forming all of these different features we're observing in the middle of our own galaxy. Now these gamma ray and X-ray emissions are actually extremely bright. Inside of these bubbles there is quite a lot of very hot gas, a lot of magnetic fields and also quite a lot of various interactions between the gas and of course the cosmic rays which uh, allow us to see these bubbles to begin with. It's sort of done in this way. The gamma rays are formed through the interaction with cosmic rays and a lot of other cosmic radiation. Now for the most part what this suggests is that these bubbles are extremely extremely powerful and possess quite a lot of highly energetic matter. But what exactly caused these bubbles to appear? Well right now the best explanation is basically the same explanation we've had before and it essentially relates to what most galaxies seem to go through, the so called AGN stage. There are quite a lot of different AGNs, such as for example quasars, blazars, Cepher galaxies and so on, but for the most part most galaxies, most AGN galaxies are not really super powerful. The best example is actually the nearby Centaurus A galaxy, which sort of looks like this if you were to look at it in different frequencies of light, including radio waves and microwaves and x-rays. But in regular optical light this is what it sort of looks like and it doesn't really possess any special features. Only the center of this galaxy is active and only the center produces a lot more radio waves than other galaxies. So today we know that most AGNs, most active galactic nuclei, are essentially just something that happens to a typical galaxy when for example there is a lot of mass that suddenly gets absorbed by the central black hole and creates these really powerful emissions. Now sometimes these emissions turn a galaxy into a quasar and essentially extinguish the entire galaxy from producing new stars. But what seems to be the case is that in most cases this does not happen. 
What seems to happen is that the galaxy has these really bright flashes from basically both sides of the galaxy that emit just enough energy to possibly extinguish some of the stars in the middle, but they do not produce any long-lasting effects such as, for example, um, so-called galactic tsunamis. And I've discussed this concept in one of the previous videos. Instead, what we seem to have are these temporary events that sort of look like and act like really, really powerful supernova that create an enormous amount of energy, but only for a brief period of time, and then sort of leave behind these marks that we know as Fermi bubbles. And this particular event seems to have occurred approximately 5 million years ago, and may have been equivalent in power to about 20,000 different supernova. But this didn't happen all at once. It actually happened over a period of about 1 million years. So for about a million years, our galaxy probably resembled the Centaurus A galaxy, and was producing quite a lot of radiation. But the more interesting question here is of course, did this have any influence on the life on our planet? Because, as you probably know, around 5 million years ago, our ancestors were already pretty active on the planet and were already doing a lot of different things, including of course hunting and gathering. And so it is very important for us to try to understand if this event had any sort of influence on the evolution of life, and most importantly, if it had any influence on our own evolution as well. Although as of today, there doesn't seem to be any studies indicating that something major happened around 5 million years ago. Although trying to analyze the various data on the planet and also trying to collect a lot more samples is kind of important and quite necessary in trying to understand if these events have any effect on any life on the planet. And the reason this is important is because we are pretty sure such event is going to happen at some point in the future yet again. Now obviously we don't know when and how this event is going to occur, but since in this particular case, the calculations show that um, the Fermi bubbles were actually formed by roughly around 100 masses of the sun falling into the black hole over the period of about 1 million years. This is not something we could easily predict, mostly because even though in many cases black holes do destroy stars and swallow stars whole, in this particular case it wasn't really a star that most likely caused this. It was very likely just the dust itself, interstellar dust, or some sort of an interstellar dust cloud, with a total mass of thousands and thousands of masses of the sun, and approximately 100 masses of the sun then fell into the black hole, generating all of this energy. But once again, this only happened over the period of about 1 million years, and this was not a sudden event, such as the tidal disruption event you're observing right here. It's a lot more likely that all of this dust came from outside of the galaxy, and most likely already left the galaxy and is somewhere in the intergalactic space but there are probably more of these dust clouds, invisible to us right now, circulating around the galaxy, and some of these dust clouds could also be on the way to the center of the galaxy, suggesting that these Fermi bubbles could be formed again in the future. Although luckily for us, in the last few thousands and possibly even millions of years, the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy has actually been surprisingly quiet, more quiet than any other black hole we've sort of observed so far. And this is a bit of a mystery. Why is it staying so quiet and what's preventing it from exploding once again? And even though it might not seem very important or significant, this is actually exceptionally important because from what we've learned about other galaxies in the last few decades is that once a black hole becomes very active, it has a chance of destroying everything in the galaxy, suggesting that maybe this is what kills life around the universe. But this is something that we're still trying to learn more about and trying to understand. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But until then, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.